three main forms of decentralization. BitTorrent could be an example of decentralization. It's a point-to-point -point file sharing protocol that uses a distributed architecture system and doesn't rely on any single server company or entity to supply users with file sharing. To some extent, Bitcoin is similar to BitTorrent. It can send cryptocurrency to two people that want to exchange currency without going through any intermediary or bank. This transaction model enables them to complete peer-to-peer -peer transactions autonomously within the blockchain. Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, detailed the three forms of decentralization. Architectural decentralization, how many nodes does this system consist of? At the same time, how many nodes can the system tolerate failures without being affected? Let's get specific, if a system only exists in three computers, though there are strict protection measures, as long as these three computers are destroyed at the same time, then the system will naturally be destroyed. Take the Bitcoin system as an example, there are thousands of nodes distributed all over the world, and it's impossible to destroy it whether it's a cyber attack or physical destruction. So at the architectural layer, the wider the distribution range, the more connected nodes, the more decentralized. Political decentralization, how many individuals or organizations jointly control the ultimate control of the computers that make up this system? Taking Bitcoin as an example, its nodes belong to many different institutions and individuals. If you want to attack Bitcoin, then you need to aggregate over 50% of the computing power, which is impossible for organizations or individuals. So at the political layer, the more ultimate controllers of the computers that make up the system, the more decentralized it is. Logical decentralization, from the system's interface and data structure, is the system a whole or a cluster composed of countless units? A simple heuristic, if the system is divided into two halves, and both contain the providers and users, can these two independent units still operate intact? Whether it's singularity or clustering, the former is logically centralized, and the latter is logically decentralized. Take the Bitcoin system as an example. Once the system is divided into two, its overall consensus is going to be destroyed and therefore the system will no longer exist. The blockchain doesn't have a unified server, so there's no infrastructural central point of failure, architecturally decentralized. Meanwhile, no individual or organization can completely control it, politically decentralized. But blockchain has to reach a common consensus and behaves like a single computer, logically centralized. Although the blockchain is centralized within the logical layer, it's decentralized in the other two layers, therefore the blockchain is also decentralized.